Uh, our first award is, that we're giving out today is the Neil Frank Award. Uh, this is the conference top award. It's presented to the individual for making a major impact uh, in the areas of hurricane preparedness, response, recovery mitigation, or related fields through truly exceptional and original improvements, the impacts of which must be national <clears throat> or international in scope. And this year's Neil Frank Award goes to somebody who I'd like uh, Rick Nav to kind of say a few words about. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I know that Max and Bill will echo what I'm about to say, and that is when you're the director of the National Hurricane Center, there's no way you're going to succeed in that job without an effective deputy director. And all three of us have had the personal and professional pleasure of having uh, a, a very effective deputy director throughout all of our tenures. You know, the, the staff of the National Hurricane Center is incredibly talented, getting more and more talented every day. And through all of that, we've had one of the most talented individuals that I've ever had the pleasure uh, to work with. And it is amazing when you think about uh, someone who, who is capable of doing research and can churn out some wonderful uh, academic uh, work, and Ed has done that, even though he's been in an operational setting. You know, in the last uh, three years, uh, he's published two uh, referee journal articles in the Bolton and the American Meteorological Society that have talked about the causes of the direct fatalities, you know, the forces of the storm, and the indirect fatalities associated with the storm. And how important is that, given that if we're going to save lives, we darn well better know what's taking lives so we can really address the problem head on. And that work that Ed has done in and of itself, in my opinion, would be worthy of the conference's highest honor, the Neil Frank Award. But on top of that, while doing that wonderful work that we are now utilizing for our outreach and education to great benefit, he has been doing so many things as the deputy director of the National Hurricane Center, which involves about one-third of the time being the acting director, because Max and Bill and I tended to be gone a lot, and working on the joint hurricane testbed, the hurricane forecast improvement program, the National Hurricane Operations Plan, and just basically making the National Hurricane Center run. And for all of that body of work, recently in the last three years, and over the long haul over the last three decades, Please uh, congratulate Dr. Ed Rappaport for the Neil Frank Award this year. Thank you, Rick, for uh, those very kind words. And um, I also thank the conference for this wonderful honor and all of you for your very warm reception. Like a lot of people, I owe a great deal to Neil Frank. It's over there on the side. In fact, I was hired at the National Hurricane Center at the end of Neil's last year as director there. Of course, he's continued with to be a driving force for our community for the following three decades. And that makes it all the more special for me to be associated with him through this award. Uh, I've also been fortunate to work with and for um, great leaders who have followed Neil, including the gentlemen up here, Max and Bill and Rick. And I can only hope that the next director will be as inspiring of course, this is all tempered with the distressing reality that we've lost so many people to hurricanes. And in fact, over the 30-year period, not once have we gone three years consecutively in this country without losing a life to either storm surge or rainfall-induced flooding. 
On the other hand, during that same period, we've weathered three different major hurricanes making landfall in three different states without causing loss of life due to storm surge or freshwater flooding. So it's clear it can be done. It's a difficult job. We're learning. We have lessons learned. We have past best practices. And we have innovation. Uh, perhaps uh, it won't be too long that we'll hear it announced, maybe at the National Hurricane Conference, that we indeed have gone three years, four years, five years in a row, and so on, without loss of life due to drowning in this country. And to that end, I'm looking forward to working with all of you and uh, achieving that uh, very challenging vision. So thank you again. Uh, next up are our Stingray Service Awards, who are awarded to those who sustain a significant contribution in one or more fields of hurricane-related activity or knowledge over a career. And our first award goes to Valerie Hendry for providing 30 years of outstanding aerial reconnaissance support to the nation's Hurricane Warning Service. And I'll tell you what, this must have been a fun assignment to work this long on such an important cog in the hurricane force forecast process. So Valerie, please come up and accept your award. It's long overdue. Well, you were, you were really right. I mean, this was such a privilege to spend a whole career flying. I was told when I first came into a hurricane hunting as a young lieutenant that I better not spend more than the three-year tour there because it would be the end of my career. And yet I made a really wonderful career out of it, and I can speak for all the men and women of the 53rd and say it's really a privilege to be part of this great system. So thank you very much. I have so much respect for you guys. Our second Distinguished Service Award goes to Leonard Simons for nearly three decades of hurricane outreach and education, which has generally incre greatly increased excuse me, the public awareness of, hur of hurricane hazards and preparedness in the Long Island region of New York. Although an accomplished attorney and local councilman, his passion was meteorology, and his long-term commitment to making other aware, others aware of its effects is the reason we honor Lenny today. So Leonard, please, come on up. When I walk into a uh, Long Island courtroom, just to give you an idea of the, the depth of my passion for meteorology, the judge is uh, much more likely to ask me, especially if there's a storm pending, for my weather forecast than my legal argument. And that's not always, that's not always an advantage. I want to thank... Um, uh, all of my teachers along the way, and that's from the New York Weather Forecast Office, Rick and, uh, and, and others here at the National Hurricane Center. I get to, uh, I get to work with Dan Brown, who um, uh, on the outreach, the NHC outreach program. Not only do I get to work with him, but he has provided me with information that I share with the public and has, uh, it has impacted my presentations and made them 10 times better, and I, and I very much appreciate that. 
And if I may just take a, a moment out of personal preference uh, and share something very, very personal to me. In, in the world of basketball, there's an expression that grew up. The expression is like Mike. For all those who wanted to follow in the footsteps of the great Michael Jordan, well, I have my own expression, and that expression is simply that when I grow up, I want to be like Max, Max Mayfield. And um, I, I think uh, among all those who have graced the uh, halls of the National Hurricane Center, uh, Max is, is among the most respected. And here I am receiving the Distinguished Service Award, and I get to share that stage with my idol, and I'm very, very appreciative, and I thank you. Next, we're going to recognize teams and individuals for specific, outstanding, and innovative achievement in any hurricane-related activity, which may serve as a model for others. And this could be in the uh, arenas of meteorology, uh, mitigation, and public awareness, which are the three areas that uh, we're going to be giving awards today. Uh, first, we're going to recognize five individuals uh, for their outstanding achievements in meteorology. Uh, together, this team worked towards a multi-year and multi-office effort uh, to implement cutting-edge national service, national weather service products, excuse me, that better inform the public, the media, and emergency managers about impending tropical cycl cyclone storm surge. Will Jamie Rome, William Booth, and Jennifer Sprague Hildebrand please come up and accept their awards? Uh, Doug Marcy and Jesse uh, Fan couldn't make it, uh, but we will certainly get those to them uh, when we can. So please come on up. Well, working at the, the Hurricane Center and with the National Hurricane Program, you, you have the, the privilege of working with some of the finest people uh, in the world. And so uh, being on this team with this group of people, I can honestly say um, this was, was a treat. I can still remember when the first, first prototype inundation graphic was, was presented to us. Um, Bill was director at the time. And it was like you instantly knew it was a, a paradigm-changing piece of technology. Um, and so to see it come so far, uh, so quickly, which for government is, is rare, um, has been a, a true, true uh, privilege. So thank you so much for those of you who have contributed to this and helped along the way and for um, taking the opportunity to recognize these uh, well-deserving individuals. Thank you. Up next, uh, we present the, uh, another Outstanding Achievement Award, this time for mitigation, to Dr. William Merrill for his efforts in leading a team of scientists in designing a coastal spine system to protect a highly vulnerable and strategically important uh, Houston excuse me, and Galveston area from the impacts of storm surge. The results of this team's research is an actionable plan to build the, a coastal spine properly known in Texas as the Ike Dyke along the Boulevard Peninsula and Galveston Island area. Uh, this system, when finished, will greatly reduce losses due to storm surge. Unfortunately, Dr. Merrill couldn't make it today, so uh, accepting the award on his behalf is Bill Reed. That 
Dr. Merrill sends his regrets. Uh, he couldn't make it this year, uh, but he deeply appreciates the award and looks forward to uh, meeting with some of you in the future as progress continues on, on storm surge suppression. Next, we will present awards uh, for outstanding, outstanding achievement, excuse me, for public awareness. Um, and our first award goes to Leslie Chapman Henderson uh, for leading the multi-partner effort that created hashtag Hurricane Strong, uh, a, the National, Hurric National Hurricane Resilience Initiative to save lives and homes through collaboration with leading organizations in the disaster safe movement. And this is just the latest in an effort and a dedicated commitment on the part of Leslie to make our nation safer from hurricane impacts. So Leslie, please come up and accept your award. It takes teamwork to make the dream work, and that's what Hurricane Strong is all about. So I'm going to prattle off, have a cheat sheet, all the people that have already joined it in the hopes that the rest of you guys will be on soon. And I see a lot of stickers out there. Please, partners from FEMA, stand. NOAA, <laughs> I got some of them up here. Please go ahead and stand and keep standing. Weather Channel, our national media partner. Presenting sponsors, BASF. The Home Depot, Huber, Engineered Woods, Simpson Strong Tie, State Farm, and USAA. And then, of course, again, still standing, Dr. Rick Knab. Hurricane Strong, and we're going to be talking about it in about two hours, so I won't dwell. Hurricane Strong is our opportunity to all come together through a common language. We don't have to change what we're doing, but to come together and create consistent messaging so we can get more in the resilience movement. We are so excited, and I'm personally so honored to be tasked with helping herd everyone and bring everyone, everyone together. But I think it's really important to note that this is not just us. I'm just one person of many who made last year possible for the kickoff, and thank you, Bill, for kicking it off here last year, but who are gonna make it rise and grow and motivate people to make the right decisions at the right time so that they can be safe and sound and come home to a building, their home, that's intact. So I have one last bit of business, point of personal privilege. You guys all know what's coming here, I hope. I am going to ask everyone to stand and do the Hurricane Strong pose, and our photographers are going to come up here and shoot the picture from up here. I don't know how it's going to work out with this lighting, but Dennis is a very good photographer. So everybody up on your feet. If you haven't done this before, you're in now. Okay? And our directors are going to be our models up on the stage. Left arm down, right arm up, flex your muscles. And then you can growl if you want, or you can just smile, but this is how we become hurricane strong. There's my pirates. We look forward to working with all of you, and thank you for letting us have a little fun there. Thank you, Leslie. Our second award now, Standing Achievement Public Awareness, goes to Caitlin James, also known as Ready Girl, for her work on an innovative and creative program uh, she created uh, up in the uh, New York City area. Uh, it's called Ready Girl, and it, this particular program educates New York City youth about the threats of hurricane and other disasters. So, uh, so if uh, Caitlin is here, please come up and accept your award. If not, there's somebody here to accept it on her, her behalf.
Hello, everyone. I'm Omar Bourne, Deputy Press Secretary for New York City Emergency Management, not Ready Girl, not Caitlin James. <laughs> um, unfortunately, she had to leave the conference early, but she wants to thank everyone uh, and National Hurricane Conference for the award. Uh, when Katie started this program a couple of years ago, as part of the Ready New York for Kids program, and she really wanted to find a fun uh, way in which we can get kids in New York City involved in emergency management and preparedness. And uh, it's taken off since then. And when we go out to schools and she goes out and, and teaches children, case in point, we were at a school uh, two days ago in New Orleans East, the uh, Renew Schomburg School. And she taught the kids about preparedness. And then we worked with Marvel. We have a comic book. And she gave the comic book to the children. And they were all smiling. And they pointed to the, to the, to the comic book and said, oh, this is, this is you. This is you. It really resonates with them. And the, the goal and the aim is that um, this is something that they can get excited about. They can go home and, and talk to their family about. And they can take this and take it throughout their lives and pass it on, hopefully, to others and their families. So we thank you guys uh, for honoring Katie. And unfortunately, she couldn't be here, but we thank you. We also have an Outstanding Achievement Award uh, in a similar field, in the field of education. I apologize for not saying that earlier. Uh, for Holly Moran and Christopher Knowlton. And as a team, they're recognized as a, for their outstanding work in promoting hurricane science webinars for fifth grade students. And this effort has greatly helped the National Hurricane Center and NOAA increase their hurricane awareness among school children. Uh, so if they're here today to accept their awards, uh, please come up. I would really like to thank uh, the conference for recognition. Um, it's been a great privilege to work with the outstanding folks at the National Hurricane Center and the NOAA Aircraft Operations Center meteorologists in conducting these webinars. Their dedication to communicating the science and the communication of what people should know about hurricanes is really what has made these webinars valuable. And it's been our great privilege to work with them. And we look forward to working with them many years in the future. Thank you very much. Last but certainly not least, we present the Alan Clive Service and Spirit Memorial Award. Uh, this award is presented to an individual or organization who has demonstrated the principle that all aspects of emergency management shall be accomplished without discrimination and with the inclusion of all people who can make a contribution. Um, and this year, our, it's, it's our great honor uh, that the first service award uh, Alan Klasserver goes, goes to a great dear friend of ours, Max Mayfield, uh, with WPLG Hurricane Specialist and former director of the National Hurricane Center. Uh, for many years, you've shined as a, a light strongly and consistently on issues that impact people with disabilities during disasters. Your commitment and celebrity has elevated the ability of first responders and emergency managers to communicate what does and what doesn't work. In short, you've recognized and embraced the needs of the whole community well ahead of many other professionals. Congratulations, Max. Well, thank you so much. I've always admired the focus of the Alan Clive Award, and I'm pretty sure I'm not worthy of this, but uh, one thing I have learned uh, from workshops uh, in this conference uh, 
is to take care of those uh, the, our elderly and special needs friends. And I reminded people that uh, during Hurricane Matthew every single chance I got. Uh, so I, I thank the awards committee and especially the accessibility and functional needs uh, topic committee. Thank you very much. Our second Alan Clive Memorial Award goes to Catherine Girk, emergency services uh, manager, retired from Richmond, California. She has also been an ally and a champion for all people in her community, but particularly those with disabilities. Uh, this was evidenced not only just by the communities, communities, committees that which she served on and the many awards that's been bestowed on her, but by the innovation she's developed and her tireless efforts to improve the human condition in disaster. Um, Catherine couldn't make it uh, to our war survey, but I believe Ella, Ellen Davis is here to accept it on her behalf. Good afternoon. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not Kathy. Um, I'm Elizabeth Davis, and I am the co-chair of the Accessibility uh, Topic Committee. So first, I would like to also congratulate Max, um, a true gentleman and a, a real fan I am of you. So I'm, I'm thrilled that we were able to recognize you today. I'll also say my daughter has a signed copy of Ready Girl Comic um, hung on her bedroom wall. So you all do have to get that comic book. But Kathy uh, asked that I read you a few sentences that she sent over by text this morning, so I will channel her. It is my great honor to humbly accept this award, the unselfish work you all do every day, and the great passion that you show is your dedication to the communities that we all serve across this country. This award honors an outstanding man, a retired civil rights manager for FEMA, who dedicated his life to making the world a better place, even in the midst of disaster. I'm sorry I can't be here personally to accept this amazing award in beautiful New Orleans. I wish everyone a great conference, safe travels, and my appreciation for your dedication and hard work. Sincerely, Catherine A. Girk. Thank you.